Hi everybody, I'm Spike Brave, and today I'd like to give you a look at the Tourmaline Desert map at Warrior Online. As you can tell, I'm out in Tourmaline Desert and my Locust, and I'll be talking a little bit about how this map is used in solo play, and some of the places that are important, and some of the names that players use to refer to those places. But first, let's start about talking about the battle grid. If you notice in the center of my screen at the bottom there is a grid of the map. I am standing in the uh, edge of C8 there, right up against B8. And if there were an enemy in front of me, let's say up on this ridge line, he'd probably still be in C8, but he may get out to D8 if he were far enough away. This is a great way to communicate with your team to let them know where you are, what you're seeing, and where what you're seeing is. If you'd like a view of the entire battlefield, hit the B key, and that will bring up the battle grid that shows the entire battlefield. Now you can see I'm the little tan or yellow triangle up there in the corner. If I had friendly units on here, they'd show up as blue triangles or green depending if they were in my lance or not, and then if those mechs were detecting enemy mechs, they would show up as red triangles, and of course if I were detecting an enemy mech, it would also show up as a red triangle. So this is a great tool to use to communicate with your team, and if you need a quick view of the battlefield, pull this up and then you'll be able to see what everybody on your team is seeing. So uh, keep that in mind as your battle grid. So let's start about talking about what's important on this map. And I started out here because right here is a capture point if you are playing in conquest mode or this will be a base in assault mode. So there will be some turrets along this area. It's pretty secluded back in here. Uh, not a place name for this, generally referred to as our base or enemy's base if you are playing uh, assault mode and uh, those are the base locations. So something that's uh, important to solo play occasionally is this area right here. If we come up into CA a little bit more, there's this little uh, valley here. Occasionally, occasionally what will happen is if uh, there's a few mechs left on one team, they'll fall back to this base if it's their base to defend it, get some help from the turrets. And occasionally some of those players will run down in here to either uh, sneak up on mechs as they come through over here, this is generally where they would approach from, so you can even try to ambush them there, or at least get some cover in here from the mechs that are approaching from there. So uh, you don't see this very often, but just to let you know it is here, so let's leave this base area and talk about the next area that becomes important. So if you come down, actually quite a bit, there'll be a big ridge line here. You can start to see it, this, not this particular one, but this one right out there in front of me, it looks like in D5, the edge of D5 there. And as you can see there we go, I had an enemy mech detected and it would show up as a red triangle. But this area is oftentimes used uh, for cover when uh, people start on this side of the map. They'll get up into this section of the ridge line and use it for cover to uh, fire out there and we'll show you the only place that's really called by a name on here, you can see that large hoop in the center. They'll call it the hoop, the center, the middle. Um, this is actually the remains of a uh, Overlord class dropship, it looks like to me. But uh, a lot of times players line up on this ridge, and you can see there's another ridge over there, and we'll get over there eventually. Uh, but a lot of the fighting takes place as players use these ridges for cover and then snipe at each other and shoot LRMs, and that's where the beginning of the engagement starts. So back here, behind this ridge becomes important as the match progresses because if the team that started over here starts pushing successfully and forcing this team back this area becomes where the battlefield is so uh, this place will be seen a lot in solo matches because of that so let's talk about some of the evolving gameplay I've been noticing usually you get people approaching from that way straight across now what's been starting to happen is people come around behind this ridge occasionally and we'll talk a little bit about that. Again, this hasn't been given a formal name yet. A lot of people say they're in B7. That's where we are. But what they'll do is they'll come through here, come along the side of the map and I'll uh, come from it backwards. So if we're attacking this location, we'd come from over here because there's some starting points down in a little bit past F7 there. So it'll probably be uh, in G7 where that starting location is, so we'll push up through here. So that's been occurring more frequently, and then sometimes what they'll do is they'll come up here onto this plateau, and as you can see I can look into that ridge there, and so sometimes you'll see mechs with large 
long range weapons firing into this area from this location so I'll keep that in mind so we'll keep going a little bit here and talk about the next area that's kind of important so down in here you'll get uh, some spawn points here and then on the other side of that ridge there so what we'll find here is another capture point in conquest occasionally you'll see some fighting in this area because there is a capture point here and what does happen sometimes is because some mechs start up there some mechs start right back up that there is that they'll try to push and get this point first so sometimes you'll see a single or two single lances one from each team fighting over this location not very common a lot of times somebody will run down here and see that somebody's already capping and just choose to withdraw but that does become important so we'll run back towards that other starting location I just mentioned you don't see a lot of activity in this area occasionally a mech will run through here to uh, hide during a conquest match to get those last few points but you won't see this area very often during a match unless of course it's conquest and you're running through here for those particular reasons uh, the next spot that is somewhat important to solo play is this large hill right here occasionally a mech will run up it and I don't use this area very often and I might be jump dead but there's a little uh, cubby hole up in there that uh, sometimes a mech will get up in and start shooting. So let's see if I can get up there with just my locus as I jump jets. Yep, I believe, yep, I can run up here. So occasionally you see a mech run up here and then run on the spire to do some sniping into the, you can see that ridge again. It's pretty far away, I don't know if I'd recommend it, your weapons wouldn't be at uh their best ranges but within the maximum ranges of some weapons so uh, keep that in mind or if the fighting is fighting it spills into the area right underneath the hoop that does ha happen frequently so this could be a good spot to get some advantage there but just to let you know keep your eye out for snipers up here then we'll come up here and this is the location of the other base and another capture point so let's get up here take me just a moment alrighty so that base is right here in between these two rocky outcroppings so there'll be a capture point here or a base um, again you won't see it frequently unless people have fallen back it's towards the end of the match for reinforcement from the base turrets but you will occasionally uh, get in this situation where you need to take this base and that's where it is so we'll go back towards the hoop again. And as I said, this is where the other team would spawn in, right around in here, a little bit over to uh, where that other capture point is, and then right over there by that rise. So generally this team will come over to this part of the center of the map, so right underneath the hoop here, and use this area for cover while fighting against the mechs that are up in this ridge. Uh, it's a good spot, lots of good cover here. Um, you will see a lot of fighting in here, depending on uh, if you're on the team that starts on the side and you push over into there, or if you start on that side and you're winning and you've pushed into here. So those are those two counter locations where the pushes generally end up. So you will see this quite frequently during tug play. And then if we come over a little bit, Sometimes people will drop down into this pit for cover. Um, I'll run down in there. I do not advise going in here unless you absolutely have to because it's kind of a death trap. Once you get down in, in here, even with jump jets, it's tough to get out. The only real easy way to get out is through here. So try to keep away from this area unless you absolutely have to. And then because one part of the team does spawn over here, you'll see this because you'll spawn right here. So we'll uh, take a look at this area. So there's another little valley right here, and I'll run through that on my way to the next point of interest. So there's this one. This one's a little bit better because it's easier to get out of if you have jump jets, but I wouldn't recommend hanging out here either. But you will see that during solo play quite often because right over here is another capture point, and that is located right about here. Yep, right here. So there'll be another capture point if we're playing Conquest, and as I said, there's a spawn point right there and then the other team will spawn right about 
there at that rock I'm looking at at about uh, 600 meters out. So sometimes you'll get that same scenario where the lances that spawn close to this area try to capture this point. So sometimes you'll see some fighting in this area. So there's that capture point. Something that's pretty neat about this capture point is this broken dropship right here. It's actually uh, big enough to actually go in it. And uh, I do like to hang out in here. If I'm playing Conquest and we're up on points and on the last guy, sometimes I'll run in here to hide because not a lot of people think to look here. I, I think the dropship is kind of seen as cover because once we come out and we start fighting over this uh, capture point here, you know, it's a good spot to uh, come over to the other side here, get some good cover. I don't know if a lot of players know you can actually go inside there, so that's that's one. If you're uh, playing Conquest and the last guy's hiding, check in here. It's a good chance he's in there. And then this hill isn't used very often in solo play, but if you can get up here, and it's not very hard, there's actually a, a path that shows up on the map. So here's the, the back side of that plateau, but you run around it here. Let's see if I can get up there without jump jets. Maybe not. There it is. Nope, that's still pretty pretty spiky. But uh, that's there's a little uh, plateau up there. It's a good spot to uh, hide from pursuers at if you're playing conquest again. I seem to remember there being a path up here. I haven't used it in quite some time, but uh, yeah, I'd recommend this mainly for your uh, next jump jets. So. If you're like running a generator, you can jump up there and hide. Maybe they wouldn't find you while you got your last few uh, points. And then there's just another little pass back through here that leads back to where we started. Very rarely you will see some fighting in here as people uh, get pushed down from here into here. Sometimes they'll come up into this location for some extra cover. But pretty infrequent, and as I said, mainly a desperation tactic as we're losing to try to get at least some cover rather than fighting that open area. And the last thing we'll show you here is the theta capture point that's right in the center of the map. So that area between the ridges is actually not a great place to hang out at the start of the match because you'll have both teams kind of lining up on either side. So you're kind of in no man's land and you'll uh, get picked apart pretty easily. But during conquest, if you run down in between, right here is where the theta capture point is. So this area becomes important during conquest matches because people want that theta capture point. And as the matches evolve, a lot of times what you'll see is jockeying for position around here as, let's say, what f occurs frequently is the team that started over here has pushed down into this area. So let's say we're down here and we want better position, so what they'll do is they'll come up and then push into this open area here. That's a good spot to maneuver from, but don't get caught in it, it's quite open. But they'll come into this area, maneuver up into here, and then push into this area like this. And then see we're up in the ridge where they're trying to defend and we can get some close quarters combat. Now another scenario that occurs is, let's say you've got an Atlas or a Dire Wolf sitting here blocking this, what they'll do is they'll not elect to use this path and they'll come all the way around and flank up into here and then you can see we're in that back area. So this does see quite frequent usage and then you can come into the main area here where they're trying to defend that way. Now what does occur with some matches is the use of valley along the 8 line. So what you'll see is sometimes the team that starts over here elects to come down rather than to the hoop. And this happens probably 25% of the time in the matches I see, and you may see it more or less frequently depending on just the luck of, or no, I shouldn't say luck, but the teammates that you have and what they decide they want to do. Some players may prefer to uh, push down into this area. So again, we have some pretty good cover. And then rather than pushing up into uh, the center where the theta capture point is, they'll come around the side here. Now this does give you great cover through here. And then they'll loop up. 
that epsilon capture point is just on the other side of that rise. So it'll loop up into this area and use this for cover. That can be successful if you uh, maneuver and don't stall here. If you stall here, it's kind of a, it's a nice little bowl to trap yourself in. So uh, be careful about stalling here, but they'll come around, use this area for cover, and then try to push into the ridge area from this side. And then I think what I'm seeing is they'll go all the way behind, as I mentioned at the beginning, and then try to surpass that little hole there so it don't get stuck, and then come all the way around. And I've been seeing that more and more recently, so I think that may be some uh, emerging gameplay we're seeing on this map. But that has been a look at this map. I hope it's shown you how this map's been used in solo play. Uh, told you about the hoop there so if you know they're heading hoop you know exactly what they need and sometimes when they say the hoop they'll say the drop ship instead of saying the hoop because uh, a lot of players are the same are of the same opinion I am that's the remnants of a drop ship but you can see an engine there that's actually a little hidey hole you can use wouldn't recommend it it's a dead end but for some quick cover and you can shoot out like if you're dodging all arms but this definitely does look like the uh, skeleton of a drop ship to me so sometimes if they say they're at the, they're at the dropship, they mean here and not that broken one over there in the corner I showed you earlier. So uh, that's been a look at this map, uh, how it's used in solo play. I hope I hope it's giving you some uh, information and insight on how this map is uh, currently being used. Uh, if you've liked what you're seeing here, please subscribe to my channel. Have great luck on the battlefield, and I hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.